So I will give you a brief introduction of <clears throat> Open Air Connect, Open Air, and uh, what is this service that we are testing together with you. And, and then uh, our colleague Argira from Athena Research Center will uh, show you uh, the user interface and will explain um, a bit because I know that many of you were already involved in the first phases of the, of the testing, but a lot of things uh, has changed. So, open air. Uh, you may already know that open air is the European infrastructure for open science, but in fact, we have collaboration all around the world. And we support the implementation and the uptake of open science principles in research. And we do this um, from two sides. So we have the networking infrastructure. Um, so we have uh, one national open access desk in each uh, European country, which advocates and support the implementation of open access and open science in general. We have task forces that work for um, the fairness of data, uh, on, for the global alignment and interoperability. So we established, um, uh, let's say, a common uh, understanding and best, best practices all around the world in support of open science. And we also have a technical infrastructure that provides services for for many stakeholders so we have services for funders for uh, institutional repositories for content providers uh, for research communities and also for researchers so uh, if you go to the um, open air portal you can see this um, connect provide explore develop and monitor and these are the labels for um, for the services that we offer. So today, we are, you're going to see, you're going to participate to the test of the uh, Research Community Dashboard, which is a service that OpenAir created in order to be able to build community gateways to open science. So what does it mean? It means that you can have a discipline specific uh, gateway, a portal where you can find everything that you need to implement and monitor uh, open science in your own research communities. And why? Because we think that researchers still have to face a lot of barriers in order to adopt open science publishing practices. First of all, because it's very difficult to find and to reuse the research outputs that are relevant for you as a researcher. So there is the, this literature and data deluge, and the, there is a need of a place where you can find everything that is related to your discipline, to your research topic, and we also need ways to allow you to help grow and create this space so that also other researchers of your community will find uh, a complete set of products that are easier to, to reuse. And open science publishing tools. So what does it mean for a researcher to publish? How can I publish? Uh, all types of research outputs. How can I publish the packages of uh, research outputs? So, I don't, for example, as a researcher, you may want, you may have uh, a scientific article, you may have a data sets, you may have software, and all this together form a sort of package that actually represents everything that you have done during a research activity. And this must be published because this supports um, omnicomprehensive evaluation 
and allows you to be rewarded for everything that you have done. So not only for the art. And finally, uh, there is the, the need to keep all the information about the research outputs up to date because the data that you have published can be reused by others. So new relationship to your product, new links to your product can be created over time. And this is something that um, we must keep track of it. Finally, we have the, the motivation about monitoring, because maybe you want to know which are the open science publishing practices in your research community. Uh, you want to know who is, actually, who is actually publishing packages of artifacts, for example, who is, pub who is publishing data sets in open access and who is not. Um, so we can offer, let's say, some graphs that um, explain you the, the trend of the uptake yeah, of open as of open science publishing practices in your community. And we offer all this functionality via um, what we call a community gateway, so a community gateway for open science. And, and this is done thanks to one of the main services that Open Air offers, which is the Open Air Research Graph. So Open Air collects from institutional repositories, thematic repositories, funder databases, and many, many, many other types of uh, data sources, content providers. We collect the metadata about the publications, research data, software, other types of research products. And these can be protocols, methods, uh, workflows, for example. So we collect this metadata. Um, we link it to projects, to research communities, to organizations, and we enrich this graph um, by the duplicating, because we can collect metadata records about the same products from different sources. So we merge together the duplicates, and we also apply full text mining algorithm to the open access uh, publications in order to enrich the graph with additional uh, information that we can extract from the full text itself. So for example, subjects, <coughs> sorry, the list of projects, uh, the relevance for a research infrastructure or a research community, affiliation information, this kind of things. Then we need a way you know, to offer you a view of this graph that is relevant for you and for your community. So each gateway, so each gateway has a, a set of managers that basically configure the gateway by providing a list of relevant projects, um, acknowledgement statements, uh, data sources that are relevant for your community. Zenodo communities where you know, researchers used to publish their data sets and workflows and so on. A list of subjects, keywords that are relevant for the community. And this is the way how we start to populate what you can see in, uh, in, your, in your gateway. And of course, you can contribute to it. And you can do this by manually adding the research products that are missing. Uh, and we have a dedicated functionality for it. And you can use it uh, to manually add one single item. So for example, one publication, or you can add it, uh, let's say in bulk, in batch. So you can upload a list of DOIs and all the publications and data sets with those DOIs will be added to the gateway. Or you can provide an ORCID ID and, and then you can select all the uh, research products related with that ORCID ID in order to add them to the dashboard. So this was the introduction I wanted to make. And we have a new version of 
um, betaconnect.openair.eu and all the gateways that we, we have already deployed for different communities. So um, if you have any questions or otherwise I will leave uh, the floor to Arjiro who can proceed with the showcase of the new functionality. I guess I can start. Sorry. Okay. okay. Do you see my screen? <clears throat> Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, <clears throat> this is the Beta Connect of the U that Alessia uh, told you about. This is the uh, the portal, the site that you can read to find information about the Open Air Connect project and uh, to see what gateways uh, we have already created and are uh, part of this project. I have a list of the, of the gateways that we have uh, is in here. You can see a community about art, cultural and food sciences, uh, about digital humanities, and cultural heritage, about marine sciences. And if you click on browse all, there is a, a page where you can search uh, for these communities. If you click, uh, okay, this is a uh, bit. Uh, community that I would I chose to to showcase the the gateway uh, by clicking it it will take you to the to the gateway of this community in this page um, you can subscribe using this button to this community. So in this way, you, you become part of this community and you are able to make the, to use the linking functionality that Alessio mentioned before. Uh, if you're logged in and you have subscribed to, to community, um, there is a quick link from the home page of the, of the Connect portal. So now I am logged in, I am subscribed to the following um, the following community, so I can uh, click here and visit them all. Or I can see the whole list of the communities that I am um, subscribed to. So I'm going back again to the new informatics gateway. Uh, you can see that now I'm subscribed here. Uh, in the in the home page of this gateway you can see uh, the in information related to the community to know what this what this is community is about you see statistics uh, the, the numbers what are what is this community is in numbers regarding the, the research results related to this community at the bottom of the page, you can see who are the managers, who are the curators of this, uh, of this gateway. In this case, uh, for the neuroinformatics community, we have Camille Gomez as the curator. You can click on this and see and view more details about this curator. And there is a dedicated page where you can also see a short biography for this curator. And also you can see the list of organizations that are related to this community. There is also a dedicated page for, for this 
for for information about the organizations. Regarding the research design, um, here you see an overview with the most recent results for each type, publications, research data, uh, software, and other products. And for each of these uh, products, there is a graph analysis. So you can see the, the numbers of open access, uh, closed access, publications that are related to this community and have an overview uh, with the graphs. By clicking here, uh, you can go to see all publications related to this community. And you are able to to use search and browse functionality to find results that you want. You can use keyword search or you can use filters. The main filters that we have is funders, projects, publication date, access modes, uh, type, language, and so on. Um, a new feature that we have is the ORCID ID. We have <clears throat> connected the, the, <clears throat> the authors with their ORCID ID. So by clicking, if an ORCID ID is available for an author, you can see it here with this icon. And by clicking on it, uh, you can see the ORCID ID of the author and you can uh, search for publication for results that are related to this specific author. You search uh, with his ORCID ID. All the information that you see here uh, is configured from the manager. Um, so this, uh, some of those functionalities are new. So maybe your community doesn't ha have, doesn't uh, show yet the related organization or the information about the curators. Uh, but now the manager are, are able to fill this information and make uh, the gateway presentation to, to have a quick view, to have a quick overview of what this uh, community gateway is about. Um, and the results that you see here are uh, are here because the, the curators, the, the managers of the community have configured uh, this gateway to, 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 to include those results. You as researchers, uh, you can use the linking functionality to add more information in this community. Uh, and now I will proceed with the, the linking functionality. Um, until now, do you, do you have any questions before I start saying this? Okay, so uh, I continue. Um, I click start linking, so this page appears. Um, in this page, you can search for research results using keywords. Uh, I will use an author name right now to to make it to make a search. Um, you can see that the results are from open air, uh, but we have also results from Crossref, data site, or ORC ID. Uh, for those results, you can uh, use the filters and the paging 
similar to the third page I showed you earlier. And if you find the results that you want to link, you can click the plus button and add it to your basket and it appears uh, on the right. Uh, if you don't want it, you can remove it from the basket, add one, add another one. Uh, also, you can use cross-reef results instead. If you, if something is not available yet in open air, but you know it is available through cross-reef, you can uh, search for it in ORCID and add it in your basket. Uh, also, you can use the data site or ORC ID. For ORC ID, you can search with the other name, like I did here. Uh, or you can use the ORCID ID. And find the results of this specific author and add it the anthem uh, in your bag. This is the manual way to add results by searching in those sources and add them in your basket. If you don't want to, to do it manually, um, I will clear my uh, basket here to show you what else you can do. If you don't want to do it manually, you can use a, DOI, a, a CSV file that contains a list of DOIs. Uh, I have here a file. Uh, I will show you what it contains. Um, give me a second. It is. has a list with the, the DOIs. So instead of searching one by one in Crossref, I, um, I add them in a CSV file and upload them in the linking functionality. All those, uh, all those DOIs are first are fetched from Crossref or data site and uh, they are immediately added in your basket. Now that I have added those uh, results, I will continue to the next step to find out what, uh, with what I can link them to. In this step, you can link the results that you have already selected with project, research results, or communities. Uh, I will choose to link them with uh, NI community. So I will choose communities from here. Uh, the communities, the neuroinformatics community is already selected. It's pre-selected because uh, I am in the, in the neuroinformatics community, but I can remove it or add another community, for example, a GIMFA. Uh, the community is added on the basket on the right. Uh, I will add again uh, neuroinformatics and remove again from, from here. Uh, one more thing is that there are communities that have uh, some additional path. For example, EDI uh, community has subcategories has classification. For example, you can uh, not only add EDI, I link your results with EDI, but link them with a specific country uh, of EDI. For example, link them with Greece or link it with uh, a classification scheme. Uh, this um, additional path uh, depends on the community. For example, a neuroinformatics community doesn't have a additional path. 
So uh, it is enough just to link it with the base uh, community, with the, with the neuroinformatics designate additional path. So now I continue to the last step to actually uh, so in the last set, step, I have an overview of what I have already selected. Uh, here you can see the results that I, I uploaded with the CSV file. Uh, for its result, uh, it's pre-selected that the type of the result is a publication and the access mode is open access, but if you know that, for example, the first, first result is not a publication but it's a data set, you can change it in this, um, in this step. But there is an option that you can apply the changes you did for the first one for all the, for all the leads, but now I don't want to do that, so I will click no. And for the access mode, you can um, change them to close and barcode and so on. If you think that uh, one of the results, you don't want to, to link one of these results, you can always remove them even from this uh, step. So we have here the list with the, the result. I will close it to better solve this. And the, the first, the, the, the link with the results, I want to link them with the communities. From this step, again, I can remove any community that I maybe add by mistake. And then when I am happy with what I have selected in both lists, what I can do is click confirm linking and finish uh, and create those links in open air. When I click here, uh, you will show a message that says that some of the links are not immediately published in open air, but they will uh, be published. So you have to confirm that those links are valid. It's not done by mistake or by for, for testing. Do you have any questions? Uh, for the results that they selected to link, I want them to link them with the um, uh, with the neuroinformatics community. So when the link is published to open air. Uh, the, the results that I selected to link will be available in these pages. For example, uh, I will see it in, if I search in search publication page. As soon as they are published to open air, they will be available in this list and um, visible for all uh, the researchers. In the user menu, there is a link to my, there is a page my links where you can see the full list of the links that you have created and see the status of them, if they are published to open air yet or not. And um, you have the option to delete a link if you think it, it's not uh, correct, it's not valid. I think that this is all I have to show you. So if you don't have uh, any questions, or Alessia and Andre, do you have to ask something? Yes, we have a question on the chat. So oh. uh, do you plan to embed Viper, the Visual Project Explorer, within the Connect portal? Um, so, um, we are not planning to 
integrated in the Open Air Connect portal, I think we are starting a conversation to include it in the Open Air Explorer somehow. Because, um, in fact, Viper is um, a service of open knowledge maps, so you are able to have a, a nice way to, to browse and to search for um, publications in a, in a visual way, not only as a list of publications like we currently do. So the idea, yes, is that we are going to do um, an integration of this tool in our portals. Uh, and this is under, let's say, in our to-do list, yes. Uh, of course, we can think about integrating this also in the Connect portal, but this will come, I think, in a, at a second step, in a second stage. So if there are no other questions, um, I, I can ask you <laughs> a question. And um, basically, so we, we have um, created a survey, a questionnaire for you, uh, for you to fill in and give us your feedback on uh, on the usability of the gateways and on and on its functionality, because as as you can see, um, all the gateways uh, are under beta.openair.connect.eu, and we would like instead to promote this service into into production. So, in order also to involve uh, more researchers. So having your feedback um, by filling the questionnaire that Andre just sent uh, on the chat, it would be very helpful for, for us to complete uh, the deployment of the, of the service and to make it available to a wider audience, not only to invited researchers like, like you. Okay, so we have another question. Does Open Air have any impact on the peer review and the journal publication? Hmm. Okay, not sure that I understand the question because you, okay, you should consider uh, Open Air as an overlay on on what is available out there. So um, you never deposit something in Open Air. You deposit something in a repository, for example, Zenodo, or you publish something on a journal, for example, uh, a ju an open access journal that is um, registered in the DOAJ, which is the directory of open access journals. And the metadata about your publication or data sets will end up in open air. Uh, we are not providing services for peer review, not even post-publication peer review. And, um, and see so what we can do is to give you support in finding the right repository the right journal where you can publish and be compliant to the open science, open access mandates of the funders. So I don't know if this, uh, if this replies to, to the question. Okay. okay, so who can open a community portal? 
Okay, so um, you can request a community portal um, going to beta.connect.openair.eu. What we request is that there should be, uh, you should be somehow representative for your research community. So um, if you come and you ask to have a gateway for your uh, research project, for example, this is not really, uh, this is not really a community in this sense, but if you, um, if you instead are in a research association working on, uh, I don't know, bioinformatics, um, then we can, we can of course provide uh, a gateway for you. And you can find all the information about this in the uh, Beta Connect portal if you go to uh, the home page you can click on um, learn how to build the gateway and you will find all the information you need um, why next question sorry why did you choose crossref instead for instance core or base collections we didn't choose Crossref in favor of Core or Base. In fact, OpenAir um, collects from Core and currently collects a subset of Base, but we are going to have everything that is in Base uh, also in OpenAir. Um, The thing that we have in this uh, linking functionality, Postref, Datasite, and Orchid, is because we are not collecting everything from these three sources. So it could be the case that uh, you cannot find the publication in OpenAir, but you can find it in Postref. So this is why we are using uh, the Postref. APIs in this uh, in this linking functionality. Um, the last question asks: um, Are there any databases included that have journals with high impact? Okay, so we um, we collect from. As I said in my presentation, we collect from a lot of data sources. We have institutional repositories that are registered on Open Door. We have all the journals that are registered in the directory of Open Access Journals. We have um, part of Springer, the Open Access part of Springer. And we have also other publisher, for example, PLOS. Um, so we, we don't have in our research graph information about the impact because uh, this is commonly used as um, a metric to evaluate researchers, which shouldn't be the case. So we're not keeping information about the impact of journals. We are instead, um, we have instead information about the open access policies and copyrights of the juveniles when they come from, uh, sorry, when they are available on, uh, on the Sherpa Romeo service. So Sherpa Romeo service is a service managed by GISC and they keep, um, an up-to-date uh, database of the open access policies and copyright uh, options of all the journals. So when this information is available on, on this Sherpa Romeo service, we link to it so that you can um, better understand which are um, the policies that apply 
to the journal and to the publications that are that have been published in it. Yes, I really hope that Dora will change this. Yes, I agree. Andrea Giro, do you want to add anything? For me, uh, it's all. Uh, um, I would like to, to say only to, to the researchers that uh, we are here to to help uh, to help them in uh, any issue they have uh, when using the, these these uh, community gateways. Any question or uh, any doubt? We are here to help. Uh, we are here available to help. And. Um, and I would like to uh, highlight uh, again the, the importance to to answer the the questionnaire. It's very important for us, and uh, and thank and thank you all to to attend uh, this webinar. And Zarjiro, you you want to say something? Uh, no, I'm okay. Thank you all for 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 participating. So I think we we can uh, uh, finish this this webinar. Many thanks so, to Argiro and Alessia and all who attend this webinar. I will send um, the presentation and the recording to you. Yeah. So we, if you want to see again and to share with your colleagues, you are free to, to do it and the link to, to the questionnaire. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye all. Goodbye. Goodbye.